We are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. A good matchup here for you tonight between the Houston Astros and the Toronto Blue Jays. Live baseball here on MLB Network, and it comes your way next. Trent Thornton, a right-hander from the Keystone State, gets the ball as the starter in this one. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, Matt, five full innings for this guy in his last one. You couldn't really consider that a powerhouse outing. He was able to get a no decision, but I'm sure he and the team are looking for a lot more in this one today. And here's the left-handed hitting Michael Brantley. He'll get us started in this one under the lights. Michael Brantley. First offering on its way. There's a fastball missing down and away for a ball, 1 0. Uh, guys, as the Jays take the field here tonight, they come in looking to make it two in a row as they were winners last time out. Hey, thanks, Matty. Hey, you know what, D Roll? Try to get on a kind of a little mini winning streak here. Losing the first game of this series, winning game two, and hopefully winning this series by pulling one out here today. Yeah, Dan, they were able to shower that first loss off in the first game of the series and had a nice bounce back game yesterday. Let's see if they can steal a series right here. Last pitch was a fastball. Tries to double up with the same piece of cheese, and it gets turned around. Nice piece of hitting. And that'll bring up Alex Bregman. And he'll bounce one on the ground to first. Shaw fields it cleanly. One there. Relay throw, but it'll be too late as he's well safe at first. So that one wasn't quite hit sharply enough to turn two. Yeah, choppers like that make it really tough. You can't make the ball get to you much faster. So the key is making sure you field it cleanly and at least get one, which they did there. So coming to the plate, Jordan Alvarez. He went hitless last night in a game where his guys could push across only one score. And a ball 1-0. Bregman, base runner at first with one out. A 2 0 count to the Astros DH. Now, this is the kind of count this guy feeds on at the plate. You can bet he's geared to hit the fastball right here. 2 0 pitch on the way. We're seeing a good AB here from the three hole hitter. If he can work a walk or pick up a hit here, he's going to put that cleanup guy in a really good position to do some damage in this first inning. Line hard to the left side, but foul. Set, here's the 3-1. There's the fastball that gets the lower part of the zone called for a strike. I think it's a real possibility that they put that run on first in motion. That would help them stay out of that double play that would end the inning, but that's also kind of risky at the same time. Good battle. Count remains full. Throw over to the bag, but the runner's back easily. Another full count pitch home. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. But it bends just foul into the second deck. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Popped him up. McGuire waits on it. Two gone. Batting four. The shortstop. Now here's a look at the Astros starting lineup. Who do you have your eye on, Dan? Well, I'm watching the guy they call Dr. Smooth, Michael Brantley. He's got an on-base percentage of over 400 coming in. The elite hitters in the game put up numbers like that, so he has to be feeling really good about what he's done so far this season. I'm sure his club is pleased just as well. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And ambling over to the batter's box is Carlos Correa.
from the belt the pitch swing and a miss that time it's 0 and 1. Ball one. Tried to get him to go after the slider, but it's one and one. From the belt, the pitch. Two out base runner aboard in the top of the first. For short, hit hard. He's got it. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. Astros leave one, and now the Blue Jays will get their initial shot. No score. Josh James gets the start for Houston in this one. Dan Plezak, what do you got? Hey, you take a look at that ERA, and it's a little bloated right now. This guy's a better pitcher than that, but he hasn't been real consistent. One good game, one bad game. I think what he needs to do, if he can string together three or four good quality games in a row, that ERA will start creeping back down. He definitely needs to start pitching a lot better than he has up to this point, and it'll be interesting to see if he can turn it around in this one. Oh, had him chopping at that one. It's nothing in one. And, fellows, these Astros entering play here tonight come in trying to bounce back from a loss last time out, but they've been in good form lately, 5-2 and two over their last seven. Yeah, Matty, this is the big one right here. They split the first two games of this series. You want to steal one right here and be feeling good about yourself. Yeah, Dero, I think one of the things you want to do, you get to the third game, you'd like to win this series and finish it off by winning game three. It's always nice to win a series, whether it's at home or on the road. So this is a big one for this ball club. With that, let's take a look at the Blue Jays' starting lineup. Anybody catch your eye, Dan? You know, I'm looking forward to see what this guy can do in that five hole. His batting average is on the rise right now. And if you look at his last 10 games, you know why. He's hitting over 350 in that span. So he's found his groove. He's hitting just about everything right now. Digging in, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. took an 0 for 4 in the victory last night. And a fastball's in there for strike one. And it's one and one. You know he wants that on the mound, especially if it would have made the count 0 and 2. Didn't get it though, so now you have to make another quality pitch on one and one. One out, nobody on. And he's behind now as he missed badly on that swing. One and two. Made him look silly with that one. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. They say the toughest pitch in baseball is the located fastball. I disagree. That nasty slider is tough to hold up on. Fastball. Whoa, look out. That just about got him in the coconut. Well, that'll wake everyone up. Anytime you buzz the tower like that, there's reason for people to start getting a little bit edgy. Line toward right center. And that's into the outfield for a one-out base hit. Hey, the leadoff man wasn't able to do his job, but the number two hitter came that through right there with the single, setting the table for the big boys. Ethan. And an Eaton digging in next. Check swing, but he held up in time. Ball one. He comes in with that average down in the 240s. Three homers and 22 RBIs. And he won't bite at that one either. It's 2-0. So let's take a peek at our umpiring crew in this one. Working the plate is Larry Bullard. 
Hey, D. Rowe, Larry Bullard, he's pretty much right down the middle. You see very few managers and players getting into very many confrontations with Larry. Yeah, Larry lays in the weeds, Dan. Doesn't try and make it about him, and that's what the players love. He's got a pretty consistent strike zone, and he's approachable. Now the 2-1. Slider gets him swinging, two gone. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location, so a good job there of that exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. To the plate now, Lourdes Gurriel. Hit in the air to center field. Springer has a read on it, makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. And inning in the books, scoreless on MLB Network. George Springer the next to hit. And as you take a look at the splits here, he's actually better against right-handed pitching this season. First delivery to him on the way. Outside, that's the ball. And he gets the call that time for strike number one. Well struck but foul over by the coaching box. Now a hard liner. But this is a foul ball. The one two. Line toward the gap in left center. McKinney will range to his left as he tracks this one down in left center for the first down. That is it. The first paper, number 10. All right, guys, time for a look at how the Toronto Blue Jays set up on defense today. And when you talk about third base, you talk about a step and a dive. But you better have something to go with it when you get to your knees. And that's what this guy has, an absolute howitzer. So here's Yuli Gurriel. Little tardy on that swing as it's well wide of first. And he's carrying a batting average of just over 300. So clearly he's been a productive player with the bat in his hand so far. Another one fouled off and he's quickly behind 0-2. No score here as we play inning number two. Hit out towards second. Reined in. And there's out number two. At seven, the second baseman, Alegnes Diaz. Into the box for his first at bat in this one, Alegnes Diaz, arguably one of the hotter hitters in the league right now. Now pitch on the way. Hey. Liner towards second. But well, this won't get over the second baseman's glove as he's got it to end the inning. One, two, three, go the Astros. 
We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. And that brings up the left-handed hitting Travis Shaw as they'll have five, six, and seven here to start the home half of the second. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. And that misses ball one. The wind up and the 1 0 pitch. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. All even now, two and two. Outside and a full count, three and two. Well, that sets up a big pitch right here, Matt, because you don't want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless game. It's tough to work around the leadoff walk. And a slider. Oh, got a favorable call on that one as that's the first out of the inning. Well, that call looked like it was a little in the pitcher's favor, but it wasn't outrageous. Hey, listen, calling balls and strikes is a really tough job, and even the best are going to miss some from time to time, especially when they're sort of borderline like that last one. Not sure the hitter would want to hear that, though. Stepping into the box, Randall Gritchick, as we take a look at the splits between April and May. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Ball one. Ball one, no strike. Bottom of the second here with no score. Hey. And he fires in a strike this time to make one it ball, one, one ball and one strike. Strike taken up in the zone. Inside and a hair low. It's two balls and two strikes. Hard hit ball towards the hole. Right to him. Throw gets him. Two down. That is better. The catcher, number 10. Digging in, Reese McGuire will try to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. Here comes the first pitch. Good off speed pitch, had him out in front for strike one. Everything this guy throws is hard. That changeup he throws is in the high 80s to go along with that good heater. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Here's one that misses high. It's 1 and 1. McGuire, a 25 year old, he's in his rookie year here at the big league level. This is on the ground over to first. Guriel brings it in. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. Don't touch that remote. More on MLB Network right after this. All set for the start of the inning, and that'll bring up the outfielder, Josh Reddick. The right fielder, Josh Reddick. First delivery to him on the way. Yeah. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. Jumped ahead with strike one there, and that's something he's going to do a lot of in this start. 
He doesn't have lights out stuff, so it's important for him to be pitching ahead and have the hitters on their heels. And a base hit, so the leadoff man is on to begin the inning. Dan, how hard is it to massage your way through such a deep lineup? I mean, even the eight, nine hole hitters are solid big league players. You know, Mark, these days you're not seeing a lot of defensive specialists in the infield or outfield. If you're in that starting lineup these days, there's a pretty good job you can swing the bat. Into the box, Garrett Stubbs. And he's first pitch swinging here as he lines this one into left field for a base hit. Boy, so frustrating as a pitcher. You make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there. Try to bust him in, D-Row, and he fights it off the other way. Yeah, you tip your hat to the pitcher right there. He executed his pitch, but nice job by the offensive player fighting. It doesn't matter what it looks like. A knock's a knock. Here's Michael oh. Brantley. Now both runners are breaking. Fielded cleanly. And the throw to first is in time. One gun. Now batter. Third baseman. Now it's Gregory. And that'll bring up the former first rounder Alex Bregman. 0 for 1 here in the early going. From the stretch. Cut fastball in there for a called strike. Swing and a ball hit softly on the ground. And indeed, he'll take only the out at first as the run comes in to score. Really good team at bat right there, right? Just put the ball in play. He does this, that gets the ground ball and brings home the first run of the game from third. Digging in for his second at bat, Jordan Alvarez. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. A swing and a high drive to right center field. And he will get there to make the running play, and that will end the inning. Astros plate one on a couple of hits. We'll head now to the home half of inning number three. It's the Astros one, the Jays nothing. Welcome back. As the Blue Jays look to get their bats going in the third inning, and you can say they've been trying to do that pretty much all year. Entering the day, they're having troubles in two significant areas, on-base percentage and strikeouts, both of which they rank near the bottom of the league. One coach told me they're doing everything they can to make adjustments, most notably by having more patient at-bats. He said there are times to be aggressive early in an at-bat, but for the most part, we need to do a better job of working the count. We have to draw more walks and get into better hitters counts. That's something to keep in mind as we watch them the rest of the way, guys. All right, thanks, Heidi. First offering on its way. Billy McKinney is in to start things off as he looks at a ball to start the inning. 1 0. 2 0 to the Jays' left fielder. Tight break with the slider there, catches the inside for a strike. And a big swing and a miss here. Two strikes. Change up taken for ball three. Well below the zone. You do not want to walk the eight-hole hitter. It just opens up so many options. Do we bunt him over to second with the nine-hole hitter? Do we try and play for that big rally with the top of the order coming up? This is a huge pitch. You can't allow this guy to walk. Popped him up. Bregman backs up a bit and he takes charge for the first out. And with that, let's take a moment to show you what's happening in the American League's Western Division.
Coming to the plate now, Kevin Biggio. He also had three hits in the win last night. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. And this one's nowhere close as that bounces to the plate for ball one. Swing and a miss. Looked like the slider there. A ball and a strike. Well, he doubled up on that slider, so that tells me he's really feeling it at this point in the game. Good chance we'll see a heavy dose of that slider as this start continues. Swing and a liner, but unfortunately right at the shortstop for the second out. Now back, the designated hitter, Bo Biscuit. So it's back to the top of the order now. And in the bat next, the legacy Bo Bichette. First pitch coming, here it is. Ball one, no strike. The 1 0. He is swung on and missed, strike one. one, and one. It's been more than two innings since this guy's allowed anyone to reach base. He looks pretty unbeatable on the bump right now. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. And a fastball called strike three, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. They still trail one nothing. Digging in to try it again, Carlos Correa. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Here's the first pitch to him. This is hit down the right field line, but it's going to get out of play for strike one. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. And he takes ball two, and it's two and one. A swing and a drive to center field. That one's got a chance. Eaton going back, but he can't get it as it's off the wall. He hit the corner and tries for third. And he will make it there safely as he fires off the fourth with a leadoff triple. Boy, after that base knock right there, d -roll, he extends his hitting streak to seven games. Yeah, and you can tell he's made some necessary adjustments at the plate. Anytime you're getting a knock every day of the week, you're doing things right. He's keeping that front shoulder tucked, staying inside the ball, not trying to do too much. George Springer will stand in for the second time now as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing in one. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Yanked the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. One run, four hits. No errors in the ballgame for the Astros to this point. Pulls this one in the air out to left. McKinney's there for it. He gets there to make the catch, but this should bring home a run as the runner tags from third. And it's a sack fly and an RBI. It's now a 2 0 game. The great job of offensive execution there. Lead off triple and then the sack fly to bring home a run. Now the Cuban import Yuli Gurriel. Bases empty and one away following the sack fly. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Pitch popped straight up. Thornton shading to his right. He's got it, and there are two down now. Now batter, the second baseman, Aledmus. 
Diaz. Digging in now, Aledmus Diaz comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. First pitch of the at bat. That's a ball. And he'll start him with a slider that's taken that's down and away for ball one. Here's a 1 0 cutter that's low, 2 0. Hey, always a good idea to take a couple of pitches when you're facing a young arm like this one. And now he's put himself in a real good hitter's count. Now the 2 0 home. 3 and 0 now. If I'm in the box right now, I'm coming unglued. He is going to throw something over the heart of the plate. The 3 0 is taken strike one. And that's outside. He lost him ball four. And as a pitcher, that's always tough. Looked like he got a bad break on some of those calls, but he's got to learn that sometimes the calls don't go your way and you've just got to move on. That's something that young pitchers can have a hard time with, though. Standing in, Josh Reddick. He singled his last time up. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Rounded softly down the line toward first. Throw in time, and the side is retired. So one run on one hit, no errors, and a runner left. To the bottom of inning number four we go. The Astros lead it two to nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and that'll give way to the third baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. Owen oh, won the count. Now here's the pitch. And a half swing here, but this is in there for a called strike two. Fastball strike three called on the outside corner, and a pretty generous corner at that as that's the first down of the inning. I'll tell you, he looks really dialed in on the bump right there. He's got a shutout going, and he really seems to have this lineup off balance. Even when he challenges them up in the zone, they don't have an answer for it. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And the next to bat is speedy Adam Eaton. Who started him with the change and it's nothing in one. No runs just one hit and no errors in the game for Toronto. Here's one that misses high it's one and one. Skied in the air to straightaway left. There to pull it in is Brantley, and there are two gone now. The batter number so with the fly out there coming on the fastball, seems like an appropriate time to check out our pitch speed comparison for these two starters. And whoa, you see the big number. How about 99 for a top speed? Not too many guys around the league can match that. Next to bat for Toronto, Lourdes Gurriel. So far, 0 for 1 with a flyout. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And no oh, swing, God. apparently. Ball one. Well behind that Wait, fastball, it's a swinging strike. That's not a pitch he misses very often. He knows he should have done something with that one. Good idea with the change, but it's two and one. Boy, they've been just getting shut down right here. Been a while since they've even had a runner on. So I think it's time to start looking for ways to make some things happen. Drop a bunt, get up on the plate, something. The two one. Will not catch the zone, ball three. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. I 
Strike two called, and it's full three and two. Great job of doubling up with a fastball inside. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher go in there, but they won't go back in there a second time. This guy's not afraid to pitch inside. Three two pitch. High in the air down the right field line. And foul. Good battle here. This will be the seventh pitch coming up. And that one's taken outside for a ball. They walked him. So no one, two, three inning here. They've got themselves a two out base runner. This is only their second base runner of the game after that earlier hit. Tough to score where you don't have anyone on base. So we'll see if they can get something going here. So we're runner at first here with two gone in the inning. And that brings up the left-handed hitter, Travis Shaw. He's set and the pitch. Nope. Below the oh, knees, yeah. one ball, no strikes. Waved at and missed as he took something off there. One and one. Hey, he's got great feel for that pitch right there. He can throw it anytime he wants for a strike. A two and one count to the Blue Jays' first baseman. A runner on first with two away. A little early, and now it's even at two and two. Open to send him packing. Pitch on its way. Got him swinging as he runs the fastball by him to end the inning. Blue Jays held in check. They're still down. It's 2 nothing. Stepping in, Garrett Stubbs. He'll start off the fifth in this one. Garrett Stubbs. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Ball. And this is low, ball one. Ball one, no strike. Now this is sprayed foul off to the left, and that'll even the count at one and one. Stubbs, playing here in his age 26 season, he was an eighth round selection back in the 2015 MLB draft. Hey, this guy's got a chance to be an absolute steal. Being drafted where he was, there are definite signs that he has a chance to make an impact at the big league level. The one two. Don't blame the pitcher one bit for trying to get the chase right there. He's been fouling everything off. He's still got the entire arsenal open to him. So we'll see what pitch he comes with next. Here now the 2-2. Line toward the alley in left center. But this will be pulled in out there in left center. Well hit, but a rough out number one. Good contact to start out the inning. Thought he might be on base with some sort of a hit, but it hung up there too long. Just unlucky that time. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Michael Brantley. One for two with a base hit back in the first inning of play. Here it comes. A ball and no strikes. Bases are empty, one man out. Two and no to Brantley. It's a lot easier to hit when you're putting yourself in good hitters counts. This guy's done a great job not swinging at pitchers pitches and when he's getting the ball in the zone he's getting the barrel to it. He's been hot lately. Hit on the ground out to short scooped up. In time to first and there are two away. Next to the after, the third baseman, Alex Bregman. So bases are empty here with two gone. And that'll bring up the LSU product, Alex Bregman. 
First delivery to him on the way. Hey, this is a huge at bat right here. This pitcher wants to end this inning and have three, four, five do up to start the next inning. Two out, nobody on. Hit softly down the line at first, but this will wind up a foul ball, strike two. Into the windup, here comes the 0 2 pitch. Nope, that's down. Hey, that 0 2 fastball wasn't even close, but I'm hit right now. I'm still sitting on that heater. The 1 2 is laid off right. for ball two. Having a hard time putting this hitter away here. And when I was looking at the tape on him from his last start, this is what I saw a lot of. He's not closing the door on guys, and, and when that's the case, they eventually get a pitch that they can do something with. On the screws to shortstop, but caught to retire the side. Astros go down one, two, three, but they're on top two to nothing. Back now here at Rogers Center, and here's Heidi. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Blue Jays to discuss his thoughts on his team's lineup so far. And he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. A lot of their outs have come from weak contact and strikeouts as a result of chasing pitches outside the strike zone. He said it's going to be extremely important for them going forward to be more selective with their swings and force the opposition to throw more strikes. All right, Heidi, thank you. Randall Grichik at the plate now. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Hit high and deep to right center. On the move is Reddick. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first out. So still nothing against him on the scoreboard here in the fifth as we check out the league leaderboard for Team ERA. And we find that these guys are currently third best in the AL in that department. Ready now, Reese McGuire. First pitch of the at-bat. Pulled toward right center field. Springer on the run. He tracks it down and makes the play to record the second out. Now back, the left fielder, Billy McKinney. Ready for another chance? Billy McKinney flied out in his first at bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. Now here's the pitch. And a layoff fastball here in a good spot, but ruled the ball 1 and 0. Here's the pitch. Ball. Up around the letters with that one for ball two. Outside, three and oh now. Well, he knows it, but this is the kind of guy you just have to go right after. He's not the biggest threat with the bat, so it's time to challenge him right here. Here it is, the 3-0. Hey. You maybe get two pitches a game where all the guesswork goes out the window. This is certainly that situation. Bases are empty here with two men out. Hey. Fastball in there, three and two. Hey. Strike three on a pitch in the dirt. And that ends the inning. So put another zero on the board as they've been held scoreless through five. Five innings complete. It's the Astros two, the Jays nothing. Next will be the designated hitter, Jordan Alvarez. And she'll be the one leading things off for Houston in the sixth. Alvarez.
First delivery to him on the way. Breaking ball below the zone. That's ball one. Hey, there's not a lot you can do with a slider breaking down and in unless you catch it way out front. I like the idea of taking it and making the pitcher bring you something a little more hittable. Grounded to first. Shaw has it. And the off-balance throw beats him at first, and that's a tough play. Now batting. Shortstop. Carlos Correa. One away for the Astros here in the sixth. And the former number one overall pick in American League Rookie of the Year, Carlos Correa, bats next. He's ready. Here's the first offering. Seared down the first baseline. He dives, but he can't pull it in, and it's down the line into right. And he'll reach second now with one away. So a good job of going the other way here as he checks in with the one out double. And as you see there, that total good for second place on this Astros ball club. Here's George Springer as he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. He hit a sack fly earlier. Astro center fielder ahead with a 2 and 0 count. 2 0 to a guy with this kind of pop. You better be awfully careful because he's going to be swinging out of his shoes. From the belt, the pitch. Hit out towards second. He's got it. And that's the second out. The bat. The first baseman. In the left field. So a runner at third. Two men are out. And digging into bat next, the Cuban import, Yuli Gurriel. First pitch coming. Here it is. No. The 1 0. High in the air out to center field. Eaton is under it. Makes the catch, and that'll retire the side. One left for Houston as they're unable to add to their 2 0 lead. Into the box now, Kevin Biggio will start things out in their half of the sixth as they look to shake things up here for a lineup that, quite frankly, has been non existent today. No doubt about that, Matt. They've been completely overmatched to this point. One hit through five innings. I mean, what else can you say about the pitching they faced other than it's been fantastic? We'll Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Lifted the other way down the left field line. And that will end up a foul ball. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 and 1. Late swing there on the changeup. Couldn't make up his mind, I guess. It's strike two. Ball and two strikes now. Fastball swung on and missed for the first down. Well, this has been a completely different performance from the offense that we saw yesterday. They were looking like the 27 Yankees 24 hours ago, but they've been held in check so far in this one. That's kind of how baseball goes, though. In now, Bo Bichette. As the first pitch to him is taken low and away for ball one. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. The 1 0. One out, nobody on. 
And it's two balls and a strike to the Jays' leadoff batter. And that misses off the plate and low, so it's three and one now. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is on deck. And the count will be full. And a changeup couldn't get him to bite, and it's ball four. When a guy's been swinging the bat as well as he has in this series, now you definitely want to take the bat out of his hands. A free pass to first is better than what he's been doing the last couple of games. Into the box, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He's one for two in the ball game. First pitch on its way. Hey, this guy's done a better job than expected. He's made some bad pitches in the strike zone, but so far he hasn't gotten hurt by him. And one and one as this one's in on the hands. Now some action out in the Houston bullpen as it appears both a lefty and a right-hander are up to throw. Runners on first with one down. Swung on, and this ball is hammered. Forget about it. Gone! So a two-run shot to left center. 12 home runs for him now thus far as the Blue Jays have rallied back to tie it at two. This is a perfect example of the total concentration it takes to be a pitcher at this level. He was on cruise control, hitting his spots, preserving a two-run lead, and then boom! He misses his location, and the game is tied. Back to square one. Now here comes the Houston manager out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And a change is forthcoming, as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. So he departs in a tie ball game here tonight. You can already hang a no decision on him for this one. Rogelio Armenteros, a six foot one inch right hander, will be the one to get the call from the bullpen here. Rogelio Armenteros. In now is Adam Eaton. As the first pitch to him is in there for a cold strike one. Wind up and the 0 1. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. The batter number 13. Good stop. Lourdes. Guriel. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Lourdes Guriel. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Two out, nobody on. Chased a low ball there, and he's quickly down in the count 0 and 2. Wow, what makes it so tough to be a hitter is to be able to hit and change his speeds, right? You're geared up for the fastball, and all of a sudden, he pulls the string and throws you the straight change, the dreaded equalizer. 
Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side is retired. Jays strike for a couple as you get another look at the two-run dinger. Bottom third of the order, 7-8-9, due up to start the seventh, and we're deadlocked now at two apiece. Welcome back. Here's Heidi Watney with the report as we get set for the top of the seventh. Heidi? Thanks, Matt. During the commercial break, I discussed the Astros' offense with Houston's manager. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. He said it feels like every time they've made contact, it's been hard contact. And the numbers certainly back that up. In total, they've hit an amazing 10 line drives in this game alone. And while some of those have resulted in outs, it's consistency that has this coaching staff feeling really good about please. what they're seeing right now. now pitching for the Thank you, Heidi. Anthony Bass is on to pitch from the bullpen Anthony. now to start inning number seven. And that'll bring up a lead Miss Diaz. In prior meetings against Anthony Bass, not a big sample size, 0 for 1. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Good deception on the slider there as he's way out in front. Here's a breaking ball, but it doesn't quite find the strike zone. Swung on and chopped up the middle, fielded cleanly, and the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven. Now in the box, Josh Reddick. He's working on a one for two game so far. First pitch of the at bat. Fastball well outside. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Reddick waiting, and now the pitch. Two balls and a strike. I got two on the count. Flares this one over toward first. And there are two away now. Up next to the Astros, the catcher, Garrett Stubbs. Stepping up to the plate, Garrett Stubbs. A hit and two tries for him so far. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And a changeup here misses off the corner to start him out. It's ball one. That missed. Close. It's ball two. Two outs here, and the focus needs to stay sharp. You don't want that lineup turning over in an inning if you can help it. I'm out. And he'll step off and try again. Bases are empty here with two men out. And now time is called, and the reliever is warm out there. Now the 2-0. This is pulled into right. Richard is there, and he'll make the catch to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Astros. And this game is still tied at two and two. Last half of the seventh here, and that brings up the left-handed hitter, Travis Shaw. Draw. 
Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Hit hard down the line. But a foul ball here. 0 and 1. Now the pitch. And a pitch in the dirt as he lays off. It's 1 and 1. Ground ball right side straight into the shift. Oh, behind the back. And there's one away. The right fielder, number 15. Rango. Gritchick. Coming to the plate now, Rendell Gritchick. First offering on its way. A fastball off the plate away. It's ball one. And he won't bite at that one either. It's 2 0. Oh. If you've been paying attention, the guy on the mound does not want to come inside. If I'm at the plate, I'm leaning out over. Two balls and a strike now. He's fallen behind now, three and one. When you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. The three and one pitch. Hit back up the middle. And there's out number two. Now batter, number 10. Into the box now, Reese McGuire. He's 0 for 2 thus far in this one. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. And that changeup makes him jump. A swing and a miss. A little quick on that swing, and he finds himself behind 0 and 2. Nothing in two count and the pitch. Well, that's a pitch right there. You've got to just lay off. There's a good chance he's going to throw it on 0 and 2. And if you can recognize it starting down in the zone, you know it's only going to go down from there. Lifted in the air to center field. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Blue Jays go down in order. Score remains deadlocked at 2-2. Next up for the Strohs, Michael Brantley. And this tie ball game is a battle of the bullpens now, and I'm sure you're enjoying that, Dan. The bullpens are such a big part of baseball now, Matt. All these teams have such good 7th, 8th, and 9th inning guys. It all boils down to whose bullpen is better. Here's the first pitch to him. They love the confidence in that pitch right there going right after one of the better hitters on this team not afraid to execute into the windup here comes the 0 and 1 nope I got one ball one strike Swing and a drive to right. There it goes. Gone to lead off the inning. A solo shot here to straightaway right field. And it's now a one-run ball game. What a great piece of clutch hitting right there to give his boys the lead. Going to put a lot of pressure on the opposition after score with only six outs to go.
Up next to the Astros, the third baseman, Alex. Justin Blake. Miller is on Blake. to pitch here in the eighth Blake. with nobody Blake. out. Now pitching for the Blue Jays, number 60, Justin Miller. So now to the plate, Alex Bregman, as he'll take a look at ball one. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. The 1 0. in the air out to center field. Eaton has to roam straight back but he has it for the first out. Now batting designated hitter Jordan Alvarez. Digging in Jordan Alvarez. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Fastball in there for a called strike. And he goes the other way as this is hit high and deep out to straightaway left. McKinney is back to the warning track and he's able to put it away for the second out. Had a long way to go to make that running catch and here it is again with the show track numbers. Took a great angle at it. Showed nice closing speed and ended up running close to 110 feet to finally bring it in. No doubt in efforts his teammates are appreciative of. So next to swing the bat will be Carlos Correa. He doubled his last time through. Yeah, he did a great job to go down and get that one his last at bat. But I got to think they're going to pitch him up, maybe elevate something in the zone. Interested to see how he approaches this next AB. Hit hard on the ground to first. Oh, and he can't come up with it. And the throw to first is in time, but the damage has been done as the side is retired. Astros get a run here courtesy of the solo homer. Bottom of the eighth coming up, and Houston's taking a 3-2 lead. Ryan Presley is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 55, Ryan Presley. Bottom of inning number eight set to go. And digging in is the outfielder, Billy McKinney. This thing's far from over, even though we're moving into the back end of this game. Only down by one. All they need to do is get this leadoff guy, and they're an extra base hit away from tying this thing up. Swing and a miss on the slider. Nothing in one. One pitch takes a pass and misses that strike two. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. A little bit off the outside, it's one and two. Now the pitch. Wow, that was a close pitch on one and two. The count's now on two and two, but boy, that one very easily could have been called strike three. Really close pitch. And that's taken high for a ball that's full now, three and two. 
No pitcher likes to take the count to three and two, especially when you throw a non-competitive pitch like that on two and two. That one wasn't even close. Swung on and missed. He didn't even come close to contact on a ball way out of the zone. One out. This pitching staff has done a really good job against this guy in this series. This is a really good hitter, and it's not easy to make a guy strike out five times in a series up to this point, but that's what they've done to this guy so far. At the plate, Kevin Biggio, as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one. 0 for 2 for him to this point. The 1 0 he is swung on and missed in that strike one. I think it's about time to choke up on that bat and get that foot down. He's awfully tardy right now. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Springer has a read on it. Two down. Now batting. The designated hitter. Whoa. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Bo Bichette, fourth trip to the plate for him, and he's at risk of ending that nice hitting streak that he's put together. Yeah, chances are it's on his mind, Matt, but you just have to let that get out of the way as best you can. You have to approach this at bat just like any other. Otherwise, you're just getting in your own way. First delivery to him on the way. Count one and oh. This one, everything we could have hoped for, three to two in inning number eight. Hit the other way out toward right field. Reddick has a read on it, and that's the third out. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. They're down three to two. New inning set to get underway, and that brings in George Springer. The center fielder, number four, George Springer. First pitch on its way. Here we go with inning number nine as the first pitch misses for ball one. Called strike at the knees. Evens the count at one and one. Can't keep the weight back and he falls behind one and two. Now the pitch. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. And it's fouled away. Here's another 2 2. And a good hard slider as this one swung on and missed for the first out here in the ninth. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one. The bullpen has looked sharp and have backed up a nice effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. Into the box now, Yuli Gurriel turned on down the line. Well, this is foul for the first strike. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Set here's the 0 1. Outside, that's the ball. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Oh, a little bit good. outside, 2 and 1.
Here's the pitch. Oh, that's out. Guriel swings and it's hit very well out to left. Looking up McKinney. Gone! It's a solo homer for Yuli Guriel, number 10 for him on the year, and it's given the Astros a 4 to 2 lead. Bullpen is going to have to take care of business in the bottom half of this inning. But they're going to be able to throw a lot freer that they've got that extra run to play with. Insurance runs are always huge. Now batter, the second baseman, a legend. Diaz. Stepping in now, Aledmus Diaz, as he'll watch a slider that runs out of the strike zone away for ball one. No hits to this point. Hit hard to third. And a sliding try there at third, but it skips by him a base hit. So he waited till the ninth yeah, inning, but he comes through here to extend the hit streak. That was close. Yeah, Matty B, you see that wry smile of him coming out of the box right there. He knew what was on the line. He'd be lying if he didn't. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on you because you're walking into that. Wilmer Font enters the game with one gone in the top of inning number nine. Number 63, Wilmer. Stepping in is Josh Reddick as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Runner at first here, one man out. Outside for a ball, one and one. Down the third baseline. But this will get foul. It's a ball and two strikes. Working for the punch out and the offering. Line toward the gap in left center. Oh, and he misses it. Dan, this guy's on fire. I used to say all the time it's about 150 ABs to 200 ABs where you start yeah. figuring out what type of season you're going to have. He's obviously in May, and he's on fire. d -Row, he's been locked in from day one of this season. It's continuing right now. Anything that is around the strike zone, he feels he can get the barrel to it, and he continues to hit line drives. Just gets a piece of it, strike one. Oh, and one count, and the pitch. Well, right back at him, and it hit him. Safe at first. A good effort to recover there, and he almost made the play, but that's a base hit. Now batting, left fielder, Michael Brantley. And now we'll step off the rubber here and just look him back to third. Miles Straw will come on now to replace him as he's in to pinch run following the injury. To the plate now, Michael Brantley skied in the air to straightaway left. McKinney's there for it. 
And the play is made, but this should be good enough for an RBI as the runner from third tags up. And they will tack on another on the sack fly, make it a 5-2 game now. Ready once again, Alex Bregman. And we'll see what he can do here. Two on, two away, two home so far this inning. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. No problem with that take right there. First pitch from a reliever. Got to calibrate that velocity. Counts even one and one to Alex Bregman. Runners on first and third, two away. One and two now as that one's fouled off. As a look, now the pitch. That's a good take on a fastball out of the zone. Hey, I get it. He's looking for a ball to drive, but that ball was a little bit too far up in the zone. That's one you normally pop right up. And a full count as that misses. It's three and two now. He spoils another one, and we'll do it again. The next three, two. And he misses with it for ball four. So the bases will be loaded now with two away. Oh, that's a walk that could really change the complexion of the game. With the bases loaded, if he gives up a base hit right here, it could get real ugly. Now the Astros' designated hitter, Jordan Alvarez. He flew out in his last at-bat. Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last A-B. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on some. One run is scored. And the second run will score as they stretch things even further. Now 7-2. to two. Boy, talking about having ducks on the pond right there, d -Rose. I know everybody wants to hit a home run. Those are the ones you remember. But without question, Dan, two out, two RBI knocks with runners in scoring position right there, you remember these knocks. Here's Carlos Correa now as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. Two hits in four attempts to this point. Is swung on and driven out to right center field. A ball that's well hit. And that'll get down out there near the wall. One run is scored. Here's a second runner around third. And he's safe at the plate. And they're pulling away. They lead by seven. Sometimes it's hard to explain when a game is this lopsided. A lot of things just kind of snowball on you. One thing leads to another. A big hit, which leads to another. Some bad defense, some shoddy pitching. Next thing you know, you look up, and you're on the wrong side of a whole lot of badness. At the plate now, George Springer. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. This, of course, his second appearance in the inning as they've now batted around. Comes set with the 0-1. This is line to left. McKinney is there to put it away and finally put an end to the inning. All told, ten men come to the plate here. Six of them score. Two, three, and four set to kick off the bottom of the ninth. It's the Astros nine, the Blue Jays two. Ladies Miles Straw will stick around as he'll take over in right field. For the Astros, now playing right field, number three, 
Ball set for the bottom of the ninth. And set to go is the third baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Yeah, in his last at bat, he hit a changeup out for a home run. So it'll be interesting this A.B. to see if they give him a steady diet of fastballs. And that's a base hit. So a little first pitch swing in there as he's on to kick off the inning. You know, D-Roll, there's been some great pitching in this one so far. After that knock, that's only the third hit of the game, and we're getting late into this one. Yeah, they always say you got to tip your hat to the opposition sometimes. Well, I think this offense is tired of tipping its hat. they got to start to swing the bats a little bit better. That's their third knock of the game. I know it's late, but maybe they can get something going. Standing in now, Adam Eaton. Strike one to start the at-bat. The 0-1 on its way. Liner toward right center. And that'll get down out there for extra bases. Guerrero isn't stopping. Here he comes to the plate. He's in time, and he's cut down at the plate as they team up to gun him down. The batter number 13. And now the Toronto number four hitter, Lourdes Gurriel. He's hitless coming into this at bat, so the hit streak he's been riding is on the line here. Yeah, he's up in the double digits with it. You know he wants to keep it going as long as possible, but this very well could be the last chance to do that. Good lead there at second. Here's the pitch. Now a fastball, a bit too low here. It's ball one. Somebody's getting frustrated. He's not used to getting hit around like this. The 1 0. Fouled off. Runner at second here with one man out. And this is low, ball two, two and one. A decent lead at second. Here's the pitch. Hit out towards second. And that's through into center field. Base hit. And on the error, a run is going to score. And back to first, safely he goes, as a run will score on the play as well. Nice execution right there. Ball was down below the knees. He stayed through it and was able to drive it for a base hit. So digging in next will be Travis Shaw. As he'll go after the first pitch to him and comes up empty, it's strike one. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Comes set and the 0 1. Down and away, ball one. If you're in the box right now, you got to wait him out. He obviously does not want to come see you with a fastball. He's been nibbling this hole at bat and just missed with that backdoor breaking ball. Runners on first with one down. Lays off the slider that time. Two and one. Hey, after those two breaking balls missed, you have to be sitting on a fastball right here. Hitters count now. Here's the two and one. Swing and he popped him up over in foul territory back behind third. Bregman is over now and he's got it for route number two. The right fielder, number 15, Randall Grichik. Here's Randall Grichik. He was retired via the ground ball last time up.
First pitch of the at bat. Count one and zero. Oh. Good zip on that one as he just throws it by him for strike one. Threw that fastball right by him. He had no chance to get the barrel of that one. And there's a fastball well off the plate inside. Two out with the man at first. And this one's in the dirt, but it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. Final strike for the Blue Jays. A full count, three and two to Randall Gritchick. Good spot for an RBI. Put the ball in play with the runner in motion. He could score all the way from first. A runner on first with two away. And he fouls this one off. And he rolls over this one foul. We'll do it once more. Three and two. High and deep down the left field line. And that's going to land foul. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Fouled away. And now this will be the tenth pitch of the at bat. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that'll do it here as the ball game is over. Well, in hindsight, it was the right choice to let the setup guy stay in the game and finish this thing. I wasn't so sure before, but the results sure speak for themselves. Nine to three, the final tally here in this one. The Houston Astros came through late, taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory. Rogelio Armenteros wins his fourth game out of the bullpen this year. Ryan Presley works two full innings in relief to record the save, his second. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney down on the field, and the rest of our crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. Thanks for watching MLB Network. Fans are final line score tonight. First for the victorious Astros, nine runs, 12 hits. No errors, they left five men on base. For the Blue Jays, three runs, five hits, no errors. They left three men on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and 23 minutes. Thank you for joining us here this evening. We remind you to please drive home safely.